Hello and welcome back to Edvard Munch and the Cycle of Life, this virtual tour through our current exhibition at the Chrysler Museum of Art. And we're dropping into the Freeze of Life, that great project in Berlin of 1902, which featured the Scream, the Madonna, and other great works. Last time we looked at the Seeds of Love, that exuberant opening of the first four phases of the Cycle of Life. This time we're going to look at the flowering and the passing of love. And it features several images of a man caught in a woman's hair. This woodcut uh, shows his friend Stanislav Kubizhuski caught in a woman's hair. It's a quite an interesting work of art because as a woodcut, it uh, breaks the rules of making woodcuts. In fact, what he did was he cut the plate into its separate forms and outlines there ink them separately and then put them back. That was not just a step saver, that way he could preserve the wood cut, the wood grain of the original plate and include it into the, in the actual image that he was creating to show you the material it was made of. So that's a, a one way, one of many ways in which he challenges traditional printmaking techniques. He's a very experimental printmaker. An other image of the man caught in a woman's ha hair is the sketch on the back of a print. And in it, we see the undulating form of a woman really swimming in these waves emanating from a man's head. And that's, of course, Munch's head. Uh, Munch uh, is showing a very unhealthy stage in the cycle of love, uh, where there's a feeling of entrapment. And that's a, that connects to his own life. He was, in fact, in a very unhealthy relationship with a much younger lady, Tula Larsen, the daughter of a rich wine merchant in Oslo. And in 1902, he tries to break off their engagement. Uh, it was a violent episode, uh, which he threatened suicide. There was a struggle for the revolver, which discharged into his hand and injured and disfigured one of his figure, fingers. Well, he obsessed about that for the rest of his Life. He kept coming back to it. We see this pattern here uh, um, shows that love is taking a turn. The next phase, predictably, is anxiety, the third of the four phases of the freeze of love. And that's where he put his great composition, The Scream. Here you see me with The Scream uh, when we were still open on our uh, touring our wonderful doses through the uh, exhibition. The uh, exhibition design, of course, is uh, beautifully done by Clark Williamson and Cassie Rangel. The scream documents an actual event. He was going on a walk through uh, uh, Christiania, with, uh, which is what Oslo was called then, with two friends. And it was at dusk, and the sky turned red. Uh, and he experienced this very differently. He felt it like a scream through nature. He literally says that, and that's what it says in German on the bottom of this print. The uh, face there is unlike any face that we've seen in Munch's work before. The uh, um, scream there is actually based on a Peruvian mummy that he'd seen at the Ex Universal Exposition, uh, we think, in Paris. Uh, he transforms it into this icon of anxiety. Once again, his technique here, very interesting. It looks like a woodcut. You see the bold graphic uh, lines there, but it's not. It's a lithograph. And this is one of his first prints in, uh, when he started printmaking in 1895. But already here, he's using one technique to resemble another and, and capture the fluid uh, character of, of uh, the ink technique of, of lithography, um, uh, but making it look like woodcut at the same time. The, the, the undulating lines here also serve another purpose because you remember he said the sky was red. How to capture that energy? Well, he uses those, those powerful lines and flowing forms to do that. The last phase of the cycle of life is death. And Mook knew that without any children, he was the last of the line. It would it end with, it end with him. But death for him was not the end. Matter was conserved, and bodies once again became part of nature. They're reintegrated into nature. He shows here a lurid pile of bodies and skulls and dead forms here, all thrusting, lifting up this casket with this recently deceased person in it, um, being moved and transitioned into this glorious state. 
So this is how he resolved all the trauma of his own life. He saw it and framed it into this whole story, the cycle of life. Uh, and he reached his own peace. And that's what makes the freeze of life as a project one of the, the great uh, achievements of his career. From here, we move on to the last way in which we look at the theme of the cycle of life, his project of 1908-1909, Alpha and Omega. His unhealthy relationship, uh, his addiction, his anxiety just spiraled out of control, and he was, uh, by a certain point, experiencing hallucinations when his friends encouraged him to seek psychiatric treatment, which at that point is still something quite novel. So he visited Dr. Jacobson in Copenhagen and was admitted to his clinic, and I think it took eight months, but the treatment was quite successful. It consisted of rest, medication, and even a, an early form of electroshock therapy, which he subjected himself to. Uh, at the same time, however, he pushed through with creativity, and he developed an other cycle of life, this time all uh, in lithographs based on uh, preparatory drawings and lithographic, lithographic materials, uh, that he then gave to a printmaker. Uh, and uh, in it, he tells actually a story. It is his own life, Alpha and Omega. He's Alpha, and it's the story of the first man and first woman. And the woman, of course, is Tula Larson, uh, his uh, ex fiance The uh, story is told in 23 uh, Im images, just like the freeze of life. The uh, at this point in the exhibition, we staged a beautiful uh, meditative corner, uh, uh, which uh, people could take advantage of resources provided by local mental health and addiction care uh, providers. And there was also a wonderful response station there. The furniture uh, wonderfully uh, led to us by Decorum Furniture in Norfolk. The, uh, on the left here, we actually see Dr. Jacobson. I did a wonderful portrait of his doctor and his friends. And these are the, the other four are the opening plates of Alpha and Omega. We've got the index and uh, an image in which he shows himself as a satyr. And in the following print, he shows Tula Larson uh, as one of the three ages of women uh, embodied in an amaryllis flower. And an amaryllis is thought to be a poisonous flower. So this really sets the stage here for uh, a very interesting story. The, uh, the index page here uh, actually has his scream face, but shown as the masks of comedy and tragedy. He's starting to poke fun at himself in his own life. And this is meant to be a kind of brutal re-examination of his own fears and uh, his own um, uh, misguided ideas about the, the, the whole story of love embodied in an Adam and Eve-like uh, story that, he, that was largely of his own invention. Uh, you see little emoji-like figures next to each of the, Im, of the, of the titles of the plates. Uh, you can see that it is a very much a self-mocking uh, project that he completed. He did about 150 sets of this whole uh, cycle of Alpha and Omega, it was a commercial project, uh, but it was something that was done while he was uh, being treated for addiction and depression in Copenhagen. So we're going to look at the opening print now. And the opening wall uh, of Alpha and Omega. And look to the left here, you'll see the first couple encountering each other on an island. The texts, the labels, in fact, uh, were the, of the story uh, were included in the uh, package, and we've added them to each uh, individual label so we can see how Monk guides us through uh, the, you know, the images and what uh, role they have to play in his story. So Alpha and Omega encounter each other on an island, and Omega, the woman, is probably not based on Eve so much as Lilith, that mythological first wife of Adam, who is a powerful and sensual figure. Here she takes a branch and she tickles him awake. And they're nude, they're free, and they're on an island. And they commence a love affair and, and a cycle of life that goes through, the, again, the four stages. So join me next time for our third and last installment of this tour through 
Edvard Munch in the cycle of life.